morning everybody it is day eight of vlogmas i have just finished my yoga for the day i feel like i wanted to mention i have shown my yoga before i mentioned it but i have to do yoga very regularly to keep my joints in good shape i've mentioned before on my channel i had an injury to one of my shoulders I ended up needing surgery it was quite a whole thing it was really pretty awful when it was at its worst and in order for me to keep myself well and to keep my joints healthy and comfortable, I have learned from experience that I need to do yoga really regularly. Yoga for me is great because it is stretching, but it's also strengthening. So it's just exactly what my body needs. And so I find that I really need to do yoga at least five times a week. Otherwise, I feel it in my joints and I feel my shoulders start to really bother me. I also can't leave it more than three days in a row. If I'm not doing yoga more than three days in a row, that, that's it basically. I am in pain and it takes weeks for it to go away. So that is very much a regular part of my routine. I tend to do yoga with Adrian videos on YouTube. She does a 30 day yoga challenge every year at the beginning of the year, starting on the 1st of January. I've been doing them along with her for the last three or four years. But also what I will do is just periodically, I'll feel like, okay, I'm gonna just do one of the 30 day yoga journey videos. I don't necessarily do it every single day. I'll give myself those breaks, but I feel like it's just a good structure and there's a gradual ramping up of the intensity. So I feel like it's a good balance for me and it's just a bit of a no brainer. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm gonna do my advent calendars first thing this morning. So I'm gonna start with the Kusmi tea here. Okay, day eight is over here. You can understand why these are really difficult to see the numbers. They really blend in. All right, this one is called White Bellini. It is peach and apricot flavored white tea. And I mentioned before, I'm not the biggest white tea fan, but their other white tea with the winter berries, I actually liked better than usual. So. It might surprise me. Peach and apricot, though, sound like a perfect combination for white tea, so I think that'll be an interesting one to try. I didn't mention it, but I think it was pretty clear from the video yesterday that I loved the Glog tea. It is so good, and I'm glad that I now have the whole rest of that tin that I can work through. I think that one is definitely a hit with me. And then I'll do my Fabric Godmother. Day eight is just here. All right, the tip is stabilize the inside of your seam allowance with a thin strip of interfacing before inserting a zip. Well, this is a good one. I'm not gonna argue with this one. It is a 10 pound off discount for the Fabric Godmother. And I've got a discount code on the back. I do love fabric from Fabric Godmother. I'm gonna hang on to this because I don't need fabric right now, but this expires on the 31st of March, 2023. So I've got a little while until I need to use it. I'm gonna save this one for a rainy day. So far, my big plan for the day is I wanna cut out the fabric for the dress that I'm making for the Christmas party. I'm gonna be making the Mayfair dress by Nina Lee. I have made this dress before in a double brushed poly and I absolutely love that dress. I feel like it is just so beautiful. It's so elegant. I do love a maxi dress. I'm gonna make this one long sleeve though because it's winter. It's gonna be essentially like a Christmas dress. I will show you the fabric that I've got to use a little bit later on when I'm cutting the fabric out, but I wanna get that cut out today as my main objective. Before that, I am gonna make some breakfast. So my husband and I got a couple of bananas that have definitely gone past their prime. I am somebody who once a banana starts to go a bit brown, I'd rather just let it go all the way and then bake with it because I don't really like a brown mealy kind of banana just to eat on its own, but it's so good for baking. So this morning I've had a chat with my husband about options and I'm gonna make some banana pancakes. It's a recipe from Once Upon a Chef. It's a go-to for us. I'll put it in the description box down below. 
This one is really good, I would say, for making more than you need as well and freezing it. It freezes well. I would say you can defrost them either just in the microwave on the defrost setting or just keep them out from the night before if you know that you're going to want to have them the next day. I would recommend heating them just a little bit, just about 15 minutes in the microwave before you then put them back on a pan. You don't need to oil the pan just to toast them and it gets that crunch, not really a crunch, but there's a texture that you get from pancakes with the outside is a little bit more firm and the inside's really soft. You don't get that when you microwave them to heat them up. But if you just give them like 15 seconds on each side in the pan after you've heated them a little in the microwave, honestly, they're almost as good as the original day that you made them. So I've actually got two bananas, so I'm gonna make a double batch and freeze a load. My freezer's probably gonna get pretty full, but Worst comes to worst, I have to start eating some of the delicious treats that I put in the freezer. But we actually have quite a bit of space in our freezer, so we should be good between these and all the cookies that I'm planning to make before Christmas. Start cutting out my fabric but I wanted to show you guys what I've got so the theme of the party that I was making this for is red and gold and I think I definitely kept to the theme it's a really beautiful red color I do really love this shade it's kind of like a red wine kind of a shade of burgundy and I'm sure you can see all the gold flowers all over it little flecks of gold and I think this is just gonna be so beautiful in that Nina Lee Mayfair dress it is a pretty quick project to cut out, so if it is fast, because I don't think there's many pieces, I might also cut out another project just because by the time I've set everything up, it feels kind of like a waste not to cut out more than one thing. And then that just means I'm a little bit further ahead for another project, but this is definitely the priority. So if it takes a while, then I'm not going to worry about the other project. Let's just see how I get on. bad for not laying my fabric out completely in one go and putting all the pieces on top because I just don't actually physically have the space to do that and sometimes it catches me out. I honestly don't know what I could have done differently with the width of the fabric that I have. I went with the fabric requirements and this is my dress. Let me just pan down. I'm cutting out the back. I've already cut out the front and my fabric ends here and the dress has about, let's just see, almost seven inches that I'm not going to be able to cut out. Ugh. And so now I have to compromise on my vision. There's a shorter length and a longer length of this dress. I really wanted to make the longer length, but I clearly don't have enough fabric the way I've cut it out. So I'm gonna have to go for the shorter length. What I'm gonna do is make it as long as I can on the back and then I'll match the front to it, which is still gonna be longer than their short version. So I can see what it looks like as more of like a midi, I can't remember if I had to hem this one quite significantly from memory. I feel like it was actually a really good length when I made the maxi length before. I'm sure it'll be beautiful. It just won't be the vision that I had originally, but this is life. I'm gonna carry on and this is my last pattern piece. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut out another project as well. I am calling that a successful cutting out session. So I've got my Mayfair dress cut out. 
a little shorter than planned, but I'm sure it'll still work well. And I've also managed to cut out the fabric for my NYX dress. It's a closet, closet core patterns pattern I talked about in my winter sewing plans. It's in this really gorgeous fabric. This is a viscose twill. It's a Zara X designer fabric I got from Sew Me Sunshine. And I am making this with it. So the NYX dress, a nice long sleeve, long tiered dress. What I really do love about this pattern is for the tiered skirts, because they're just big rectangles, instead of printing out the pattern pieces, they also give you the option of just measuring out rectangles if you don't want to waste paper and ink, which I very much appreciate because cutting out rectangles is simple. You can just measure, and that's what I ended up doing. And so those projects are both all cut out. It is lunchtime, so I'm going to have some lunch now, and I might get a little sneaky sewing time later on today. My husband and I are out for a chilly, chilly walk. It's actually really lovely and sunny, but it's cold. It was below freezing overnight, and there's just frost in a lot of places that is still there if the sun hasn't managed to melt it yet. It's still nice to be outside regardless, and it is really good to see the sunshine if you can. Well, what have we here, guys? Post box number three. Christmas pudding, it's a Christmas pudding extravaganza on a very frosty post box. So it gives you an idea of how chilly it is. back in nice and toasty and back in my sewing room now I get some time finally to work on my dress that I'm making for the Christmas party so I need to crack on with this one like I said before I know that this one comes together pretty fast I put together mostly on the serger so fingers crossed I make some good progress today but if not I've got tomorrow to finish it before Saturday when the party is strange construction this is with using the burrito method to enclose the back of the neckline. It's really cool and it looks really neat but it's very peculiar and confusing to put together. Totally worth it though. I know the lighting is not great but this is what I've got so I just wanted to show you I'm trying to work out where I want the waist tie to be so if the waist tie is at the wrong place the dress is just gonna look so wrong. So this is the front. I have not joined the side seams together yet, so it will be a little bit more shaped, but it's also gonna have a tie at the waist. So I've stuck a couple of pins in where the waist tie looks like it wants to be, which is actually really good for me. It's very much my natural waist, which is unusual for me. So far, so good. So I've made a loop of fabric which needs to get turned inside out and that is going to become the waist tie. So it is such an interesting construction this dress. I actually find it really quite fun to sew because I don't really know where it's going. I'm just following the instructions and I know that it works because I've done it before. But this is the front. So it's this is the right side where the waist tie is going to be. It has this gathering from this clear elastic stitched over the top. And I remember the first time around thinking, is that supposed to be on the inside? Because I don't want to have clear elastic on the outside of my dress. But the waist tie gets stitched down over the top of it. So you don't see this in the end. And I know because I've done it, it works really well. So I need to turn this waist tie right way around. It will then get top stitched over that elastic section. And then all that's left to do is to put on the sleeves, get the side seams together and hem. So I was definitely wrong in my head. I thought this was mostly done on the serger and is definitely mostly done on the sewing machine. Could easily be done on just a sewing machine. But I feel like it does come together 
quite quickly in a way because you feel like you're doing these little odd stages and then all of a sudden it's mostly a dress. So I'm excited to keep working on this. I'm calling it for today because I need to go grocery shopping. I need to have some time with my husband this evening but I'm definitely going to be working on this again tomorrow and I should be able to finish this without any problems. I've realized now that I had a tag that I really should have put inside the neck seam. So where this binding attaches, I wanted to have a seam. Um, I wanted to have the, the label made to party from the Fabric Godmother advent calendar. But there's no way, like, that was a really awkward bit to do because you were using the burrito method at that point, and I think I would have really struggled to get this in there. I don't even know if it would have been possible. I'm just trying to think about whether I could have even done that. Um, but I think, I'm going to think about if I want to have this somewhere else or if I just want to have a way to stitch it down and then I can stitch something over the top so that it's not going to be the top edge, which is a little bit rougher. But I think this label needs to go in this dress, so I'll see what I figure out. But end, end result, I am definitely, I would say most of the way through this dress. I've done most of the hard jobs. The rest of the jobs are pretty easy and I am loving how it's looking. I think it's gonna be really beautiful and not only is it gonna be good for the party, but it's gonna be a lovely dress to be able to wear for Christmas as well. Hey guys, just a couple of crafty updates at the end of the day. So. I've managed to turn the loops that are going to be the tie for the dress and I have pinned it in place so that's where it's going to cover up the elastic that you could see so I just need to top stitch that down tomorrow so that I am ready to go when I have a little bit more sewing time. The other thing is I wanted to cast on a new knitting project which feels like a ridiculous thing to call it, but it is what it is. So I am still going to be finishing the socks that I'm working on, but I thought it would be fun to make something that could be more of a Christmas decoration at the same time. And then depending on my mood, I can work on one or the other. So what I'm going to be making, they are called Tiny Tree Socks by Summer Lee Design Company. So the same knitting designer as the socks that I'm currently making, but she has a pattern for tiny socks that are then ornaments for your Christmas tree. I saw these last year and they looked so cute. And this year now I have actually a fair amount of scrap yarn left over from projects I didn't have last year. So I feel like I have the potential that I can make some fun socks. So I've been sitting and going through my yarn scrap stuff and thinking about combinations. I asked my husband to give some input as well. So. One that I want to make is just like a, I would call it like a standard sock, but with a different colored cuff and heel, are these two yarns. So I actually used these two yarns to make a pair of actual socks, but they ended up being too small for me, and I gave them to Annette, my friend Annette, whose feet are a bit smaller, but they are super cute socks. I really do love the combination, and I thought it seemed fun to make a mini version with the scrap yarn. I also wanted to do one that we're calling the three-tone. I'm sure there's a term for all these things, but basically the, the sock that's got three different colors on it. I'm going to use these three colors of yarn. I think they go really nicely together. They are, some of them, the red is particularly tiny, but you don't need a lot for that for just the toe, so I think that will work really well. I did also want to do a striped one because they're just too cute, and I'm using these two yarns. So this blue one is from the socks that I recently just knit, and this is a fun contrast. I think that will pop really well. And then the fourth one, and I'm probably not going to get to all these, but this is, you know, they might be quick projects, so I want to give myself options. The main yarn is going to be this dark gray. The heel and the toe is going to be this brown. And then the accents are going to be this light gray. So that would be the little, I'm sure there's a term for those. They look like little hearts, little Vs, basically, little knitted Vs in there. And I think that will look really cute together. So... I don't know which one I'm going to start first. I'll have to have a think about which one I want to make first, but I think they're going to be pretty fast, certainly compared to the socks that I'm already doing. Something that I think is cool about it, though, is I can try different techniques, and so there's different heel techniques than what I've done before, and there's also a different knitting design than what I've done before, so I can play around with it on a small scale, and I don't have to worry about messing it up. And the really fun thing about this is 
there's no second sock. So once you finish the sock, you're good. I think these will be fun projects to work on and I'm going to start one of them definitely this evening and we'll see how quickly they come together. That is me then for today. So I'm going to sign off, sit down, have a relax, do a little bit of cheeky knitting, and I will be checking in with you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.